Hi, I'm Cole, and I'm reading uh, from the magazine Backstage. This is about Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub is on the ride of his life. The Emmy winner has hit a new high with the marvelous Miss Maisel, but he's learned to take it all in stride. I was the baby Jesus in a live nativity scene when I was an infant. And as I understand it, that was kind of the definite baby Jesus, Tony Shalhoub, deadpans, in his unmistakable gravel tone. All other baby Jesuses are compared to mine. It is a joke, of course, but it's also as close to boast as Shalhoub will get. On an airless New York City summer afternoon, just days before he'll receive his second Emmy nomination for his work on The Marvelous Miss Maisel, the only telltale sign of his television superstardom is his signature mustache. Clad in a breezy floral button-down, not dissimilar to the Maisel character Abe's cat skills wear, he carries none of the idiosyncratic airs that have made him an emblem of the small screen. In fact, he carries no airs whatsoever. I don't think of myself as having a career. A career is what other people have, he says tucked into a booth in a bistro in Manhattan's financial district between forkfuls of steak tartare. On the inside, I'm either working or I'm not working, or I'm wondering if I'm going to work. I'm not thinking of it as a continuum. I'm thinking of it more as a roller coaster. If Shalhoub's life is a boardwalk of amusement park, the roller coaster is his work. An enticing draw, to be sure, but just one of many attractions deserving of his time and attention. That his acting career is a priority, but not his only one, continues to provide balance through the transience of life in the arts. You can't lose sight of the roller coaster because... When you're at a high point, there's a tendency to feel like you've made it. And now you're on that ride. That is complacency. And guess what? It's gonna go down inevitably, he says. Then when you get to the bottom, there's a tendency to fall into despair and surrender to that. At that point, you have to remember. Okay, I gotta focus on the work. This isn't going to last forever. Then you climb that incline again. In other words, whether good or bad, nothing is going to last. It's that impermanence on which Shalhoub has ridden from his breakout role on Wings in the 1990s to the obsessive compulsive detective on Monk in the 2000s, which made his name a household one. And now to perpetually perturbed father of the titular comedian on Amazon Prime's mega hit, Maisel, robbing every scene he's in. To date, he's garnered three Emmy Awards along with an additional seven nominations. He's also had a standout roles in films including Men in Black and The Siege starring alongside heavyweights like Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, and Denzel Washington, all while amazing a theater resume, resume, resume. <laughs> amassing a theater resume that could turn even the most veteran stage actors 
a green who. Shalhoub won a long overdue Tony Award in 2018 after three early nominations for his role in the musical The Band's Visit. It's worth noting that in 2017 and 2018 season was the same year that Maisel established itself uh, as the hottest show on television. Maisel. I'm trying to think of another way. Because, see, I would say it wrong. Maisel? Maisel? Mizzle? Macell? Macell? <laughs> Macell? <laughs> Macell! I'm going to say Maisel for now. I could be right. Shalhoub is uh, pretty sterling. Also, he's objectively having a moment. Someone called it a Shalhoub Bassance. The actor says with amusement and barely detectable relish, at the title's silliness. None of those roles or accolades or paychecks listed above, however, marked the moment when Shalhoub felt as though he made it. People always ask, was it wings? He says, no. It was when I had my first gig out of school and I was making 300 a week and I thought, I've arrived. God knows we weren't making a lot of money, but it was our first paying gig, so we thought, fantastic, we've done what we love. For me, to identify one thing is a break, he adds. For me, to identify one thing as a break flies in the face of the roller coaster. That roller coaster may be the only rigid ideology to which Shalhoub subscribes. He isn't devout to any acting method or either M variety. Though he has nothing against those actors who are. Most people need something to anchor themselves or a structure to work within, if for no other reason than to not drive themselves crazy, he says. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not exactly how I work. How does he work then? Shalhoub would never profess to have uh, having divine insight into what clicks for an actor, himself included. Some of it I'm not even able to put into words, and it wouldn't be of any value to anyone because it's my own subjective kind of Rubik's Cube, he says. It's not interesting. My process isn't translatable or describable. I mean, that is, I have a process which I'm not sure I do. That's just a word that people want to believe has some weight. It's that exact sort of verbal posturing, surely reasons, that could become an actor's Achilles heel. Hmm. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he does not feel famous, despite the fact that he frankly is. That's something on the outside. But he is hypersensitive to the perils of ego, which he calls an essential part of acting, though too much of it, it becomes a liability and a distraction. Ultimately, Shalhoub believes acting success can only come from pure intent. You've got to kind of keep your eye on the other component of it, or the other components of it. Don't worry about the celebrity of it, or the fame, or even the money, if that's what you're after, he says. You're in this uh, for the wrong reasons. While he can state explicitly the reasons performers should dedicate themselves to a life in acting, he's more reluctant to say why they should. Admittedly, no one can say for sure why Shalhoub is in this, least of all him, though he doesn't deny the mystical lure of acting's unknown. I think in some ways that's why people choose this, because they prefer it to the known, the stable, the life where it's all mapped out and you're going to be doing the same thing for 30 years. He says, that is sort of a pick your poison situation. It certainly wasn't clear 
it would be his life's work. Um, when he was an undergrad student at the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, where he described himself as having been a little bit in the wind. It wasn't even solidified when he was accepted to the Yale School of Drama, one of the country's most prestigious acting institutions, where he ended up totally by happenstance, and which was the only graduate program to which he applied. I mean, that was really stupid. He tenderly admonishes his past self. It only became clear to him that this acting thing could actually be viable when he got his first job out of Yale at the American Repertory Theater in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I think I, 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 I got to be real careful with that word because Massachusetts, because I've gotten in trouble with that word, but Cambridge, Massachusetts, I want to make sure. That job instilled in Shalhoub's what's become a healthy foundation of his long-standing career in showbiz. We were a company of actors, and it was great, because sometimes you would have a leading part in a play, and sometimes you were the second, and sometimes you were just a glorified extra, he recalls. There was a sense of sharing the limelight and supporting one another, avoiding burnout, and setting your ego aside. It was about trying to look at it as long, um, as a long game. We're going to do so many plays. We're going to share the love. That's a really good way to work. That he had a holistic outlook before matters of stardom, family, and life's general complications entered into the equation has not only been crucial to his work, it deepened his perspective on the responsibility outside of it. For me, when I get too hyper-focused on what aspects of my life, that's when things start to get wonky. But if you balance it out and give things equal attention, or strive to, he pauses, some people focus too much on money. For example, and, and lost sight of other valuable priorities. On the other hand, you cannot think about money because then you'll wake up one day and say, hey, what happened to all the money? Or what happened to all my money? You have to put acting in its proper place in your life. You have to put it in, in its proper place. Same with, with your health and your relationships, and even your family. You have to be devoted and you have to be all in. But somehow, you have to compartmentalize and not let it consume you. Shalub readily acknowledges, uh, I'm sorry, Shalub. Shalub readily acknowledges that is much easier said than done. It's all designed to plunge you into the abyss, he admits, of the industry. That he says this with gently sardonic smile exemplifies his entire world world view you can't avoid fear of the void or deny it it just lives in you but it's not necessarily the worst thing because if you can look at it as a motivator it's one of the elements that it incentivizes and can move you further when asked how he has been able to avoid becoming paralyzed by fear. His qui he's quiet for a moment before thoughtfully picking his words. I was told very early on by this teacher, I had for a very short time, I can barely remember his face, he says, he just said, persevere. In a way, that's the whole thing. Show up and keep showing up. And don't worry about all the other stuff. The other stuff can very easily become intrusive, though, and muddy, both the highs and lows of any job. We get anxious about, what if this doesn't go? What if this project doesn't go? Or on the other side, what if this goes and I'm stuck for eight years in this thing that I don't really love? Shalhoub says before once again making his case for being the most charming person alive. Actors, I think, are the only people who complain when they're working 
and complain when they're not working. But on this Friday in July, Shalhoub has no complaints. He's riding his roller coaster until the wheels fall off. I just assume that, hey, one day, this moment, this flare, this whatever you want to call it, will be extinguished, and I'll go back into the void, he muses. But, as I've said before, the void, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you cannot be terrified of it. You can embrace the nothingness. He gathers himself to head back into the afternoon, into the oppressive humidity, into the weekend, and then into a week, into so many places and so many things, but certainly not into nothingness at all. Now, this story originally appeared in August 22nd issue of Backstage magazine. It's amazing. I just want to make a comment about the writers on this magazine. Um, and I read a lot of New York, New York Times. This, this writer is Casey Mink, and it was published August 21st of 2019, about 8 a.m. I guess they can do that now. They can give the time of the publication, meaning the, the time of day, 8 a.m. is when it was posted. Last updated August 21st, 2019 at 37 a.m., so it was updated. Um, these can be shared on Facebook, on Twitter, and on other emails. So getting in one of these backstage magazines as, as an actor, uh, it's, it's, it, that's a pretty impressive thing. This is a pretty impressive magazine, and has been for a very long time. It's got a lot of uh, uh, information. And anybody that knows anything about backstage and its, a, and its history, uh, I would be very interested in, if you posted on this particular uh, YouTube post. It's about 16, 17 minutes or so this, this post is. Uh, Backstage is an amazing, amazing magazine for, for finding talent or for just exhibiting your own talent or just surviving in the industry. It, it can act as an agent. It can act as a manager. It can act as a, as a friend, as a therapist, you know. Uh, it can act as many things. Uh, Backstage is, 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 a, is a community. It's a community of uh, of believers in the industry or, or people that are believing in what they do uh, as artistic expressors, you know, as people that are expressing uh, their artistic side of them, you know, um, actors, you know, actors and performers, musicians, filmmakers, directors, you know, any any part of the industry really, and it's there. And man, if if only I had this thing in my 20s. It was there. It was there, but it wasn't in this kind of form. It, there was no access to it. But I am posting this, and I was reading from the New York Times. I'm, I'm probably going to go back to the New York Times and read more. Then I'll have other readings of Backstage as well. And uh, thank you for listening. I, I really do appreciate it.